In this video we're going to find maximum and minimum points or stationary points or turning points, whatever way you want to say it, uh, using our differentiation and we're going to do this for cubic functions. So uh, just a wee reminder of what I, this curve here, it's y is equal to x cubed minus 9x squared plus 24x. Good idea before you start to have an idea of what you should expect for your answer. So it's a positive cubic graph, so it has a general shape like this. It goes up and down and up and down, so you would expect to have a maximum and you would expect to have a minimum turning point. So before you get started, it's good to have an idea in your head of what you're going to have. Okay, so first thing you want to do is you want to find your dy by dx. So if you find your dy by x, differentiate, you're going to get 3x squared minus 18x plus 24. And remember, at a maximum, whoops, sorry, excuse me, that's terrible. At a maximum, you can imagine the, uh, the gradient is equal to 0. So dy by x equals 0. Likewise, at a minimum, the gradient is equal to 0. So what you want to do is put dy by dx equal to 0. So that means in this case, 0 is equal to 3x squared minus 18x plus 24. Now that's equal to zero, you should see that every number there, three minus 18 and 24, they're all divisible by three. So divide three by three to make the factorizing an awful lot easier. So if you divide three by three, you'll get x squared minus six x uh, plus eight. And that will factorize, use your sum and product to factorize, and that will factorize to be x minus four upon x minus two. So let's put the first bracket equal to 0, so x minus 4 equals 0, which means x is equal to 4. Put the second bracket equal to 0, x minus 2 equals 0 then, so x is equal to 2. So there's your two values. Okay, um, we can do this in two ways from here on in. What I could do, I've got my x values, I could find their corresponding y values, and then test out if it's maximum or minimum. Or, but in this case, I actually want to find my d2y by dx squared. Remember, your second derivative function allows you to test out if something is maximum or minimum. So to get your d2y by dx squared, differentiate your dy by dx again, and that will give you 6x minus 18. Okay, and I'm going to try, I'm going to say when x equals 4, d2y by dx squared is equal to 6 times 4 minus 18. Now you don't even need to show what that is equal to. But 6 times 4 would be 24 minus 18. It's going to be a positive thing. So I don't really care exactly what it is. I just care if it's positive or negative. So it's greater than 0. Now, if you remember from the last video, uh, greater dy, d2, d2y by dx squared greater than 0. It's one of these weird things in mathematics. That tells you, therefore, it's a minimum TP. And remember, we said last video, TP stands for turning point. Okay. Uh, also, we're going to say when x equals 4, my y equals, and we're putting this back into the original equation, 4 cubed minus 9 times 4 squared plus 24 times 4. And if you put that in, you will get, uh, I'm just checking my answer here, it's 16. So what we have found so far is we found that the point, which was 4, 16, is a minimum turning point. Okay, we've got one more to do, and that was our x equals 2 one. So we'll just say when x equals 2, and we've already worked out our dy by dx, or d2y by dx, I should say. d2y by dx squared is going to be equal to 6 times 2 and minus 18. And if you do 6 times 2, you get 12 minus 18. It's going to be a negative. Again, I don't really care what it is. I just care if it's positive or negative. Therefore, so far, it's going to be negative means it's a maximum turning point. Again, that weird thing in mathematics where it's sort of the opposite to what you would think. We also need to find the corresponding y value. So when x is equal to 2, y is equal to, and it's going to be 2 cubed minus 9 times 2 squared plus 24 times 2, which is equal to uh, 20. Okay, so what we found out, therefore, in this case, my turning point, which was 2, where I've lost my place, so 2, uh, 20, 
is a maximum turning point. Okay, now let's look back at our very rough sketch that I did earlier on uh, at the start. And this was a positive cubic, so positive cubic goes up and down and up again. And notice uh, it had a it'll have a maximum value here, and the maximum value we've worked out is 220, and then the minimum value was 416. So I know it's a very rough sketch I did, but you can see that they the general shape of that would be right. So 220 would be left and up uh, compared to the the four. Uh, the 416 which would be to the right a wee bit and down okay that's that example done okay this example says find to two decimal places the coordinates of any turning points on the curve and we have 4x cubed plus 2x squared minus 6x plus 4 and also determine their nature so their nature just means are they maximum or the early minimum turning points okay first thing you've got to do we'll just write down our equation again what was it y is equal to 4x cubed plus 2x squared minus 6x plus 4. And we're going to, if you see maximum, minimum, gradient, uh, sorry, maximum, minimum, uh, gradient, any of these things, tangent, normal, you want to be thinking about doing your differentiation, your dy by dx. So if I differentiate, get my dy by dx, I'm going to have 12x squared plus 4x minus 6. And I'm going to find my turning points first. So I'm going to say put. 0 equal to 12x squared plus 4x minus 6. Uh, okay, what I could do to make life a wee bit easier, to make the numbers a wee bit smaller, is divide by 2. So I'm going to get 0 equals 6x squared plus 2x minus 3. Okay, your x value. Now it said in the question, find the two decimal places. So that would give me an indication that I'm not going to be able to use a sum and product to do this. So I would probably in this one, I would just not even try to do sum and product, just go straight to using quadratic formula. So here my a is equal to 6, my b is equal to 2, and my c is equal to minus 3, and that minus is important. So quadratic formula is minus b, oh, sorry, minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So minus b, first of all, is minus 2, plus or minus the square root of the b, which was 2 squared, minus 4 times my a, which is 6, times my c, which is minus 3, all divided by 2 times my a, which was oh, which was 6. So I've made a real mess of that. That's very untidy. So we'll tidy it up on the next line. That's been minus 2 plus or minus. And I like to work out what this square root is. So it's in, clearly written in my, in my answer line. Uh, so I've got uh, minus 2. Minus, sorry, 2 squared minus, minus 4 times 6 times minus 3. Uh, we'll do that and see what we get. Okay, so I've just gone on and I've just uh, tied it up and I got minus 2 plus or minus the square root of 76 all over 12. So if we go on here, our two answers are going to be x is equal to, and I've gone to 5 dps here, uh, 0.55981 or x is equal to minus 0.89315. What we now need to do is find, and I'm going to do the order of this slightly different than the last question. And the last question I found, tested them to see if they were maximum or minimum. This time I'm actually going to find their corresponding y values first. And I've skipped the wee bit of working out here, to be honest as well. So just say when x is equal to 0.55981, y is equal to so how I've got this is I've just sorry, I've just put it back into this equation and I've done that and I've got 1.96966. I'm going to test out my d2y by dx squared. I've got to find my d2y by dx squared first. How you get your d2y by dx squared is differentiating your dy by dx. Differentiate dy by dx and you get 24x plus 4 and just say when x equals 0.55981 d2y by dx squared is equal to 24 times 0.55981 plus 4. Again, we don't really care what that is, but it is greater than 0. Therefore, that tells you it's a minimum turning point. So we'll just scroll down a wee bit and get that one.
Oh, did that one written then. Uh, so that means that tells you, remember the question said to two decimal places. So now is the time to uh, get those to two decimal places. So 0.56 was the X value to two decimal places. One point, sorry, that thing's frozen. 1.97 is a Y value to two decimal places and that's a minimum turning point. Okay, we're just left to do the last one. So the last one was when X was equal to, and it was minus 0.89315. And again, to get your Y value fired back into the original Y equation, I did that on my calculator. I got Y was equal to 8.10441. And then just say also when X was equal to minus 0.89315, your d2y by dx squared is equal to 24 times minus, I'm going to run out of space here, minus 0 0.89315 plus 4. Again, we don't really care what value it is, we just care if it's positive or negative, and that was less than zero, so negative, which is a weird thing in mathematics, therefore it's a maximum turning point. So it was a maximum turning point, and then your last line for this one is just say, therefore, and again, get your x value and corresponding y value to two decimal places. So it was minus 0.89 was the x value. The y value was 8.10 to two decimal places, and that was a maximum turning point. Okay, folks, you're now ready to do exercise. It be, and that's it.